start again? Please wait. Okay. Okay. Uh, Eloise, please start. Uh, good morning, Brazil. Good evening, Japan. My name is Eloise Helena. My advisors are Fernando Frey and Clever Sundizan. Right now, I'm going to present my master defense, whose title is Application of Simic Attributes to Enhance the Identification of Bottom Simulation Reflectors in the Yumi Takaspur Gas Rates Province, Juets Bay, Japan. This presentation was divided in 10 talks. First, I will make an introduction about the previous works, uh, briefly about the previous works, the goal of this work, and the contribution of this to, to the scientific community. Then the gas rates, identification, definitions, and their relevance, the study area, a literature review about time getter boots. It's no two and materials and methods, results and discussion, conclusions, recommendations, reference, and acknowledgement. Gas breaks are unconventional petrol reserves with a great potential energy that are scientifically and economically relevant. For instance, investigation the presence of them is important for the prevention of geohazard, for the exploitation of this cleaner energy source, the oil and coal, and even as an algae Mars study. One of countries that most developed story about gas rates is Japan. The study area is the Humitake Spoo. It's a well-known province for the occurrence of gas rates in Juetsu Basin, Japan. Since 2004, studies focus on the origin and the significance of shallow massive to fracture filling gas rates in Juetsu Basin have started by a search of consortium of universities, national institutes, and industries. Then, miscellaneous studies involving gas rate issues in this area have been carried out such as acoustic environment service, geophysical, geochemical, and geological analysis. For this work, 2D single channel seismic acquired by the Japan Agence for Marine Earth and Science and Technology, JAMSTEC, were used. These data are from two expeditions, NET-720 and NET-89, which occurred in 2007 and 2008, respectively. The goal of this work was to identify the bottom simulation reflectors of all the sun profile. For it, it was used the Escumbe G Petrol 2019 license available to us. BSRs are known to demarcate the base of gas rate stability zone. In order to highlight the real BSR of each sun profile, six sun attributes were applied. There are two attributes that measure amplitude, such as envelope and RMS amplitude, which means square amplitude. Two of geological assignments, amplitude volume technique and relative acoustic impedance, and two that measure the frequency of the seismic signal, such as spectral decomposition and instantaneous frequency. The contribution of this work is the knowledge of the effects of the application of these seismic attributes in the identification of BSRs and free gas zones in sign profile from this area, which is also used for other areas of the world. For instance, show which seismic attributes is useful to reduce the geophysical ambiguity on head of regions with several BSRs. Gas rates are crystalline solid compounds formed by water molecules, which can trap water more gases inside it, such as methane and propane. And they have a solid physical appearance similar to a solid water ice, and they are flammable. On Earth, we have three types of methane origin. It can, the most common is biogenic. It can be biogenic or thermogenic. Biogenic from actions of methanogenic bacteria at shallow zones, while thermogenic is from thermal cracking of kerogen or oil at deep, deep zones, whereas a biotic is from geologic uh, processes such as serpentinization at low temperature and geothermal volcanic systems at high temperatures. Gas rates are distributed in permafrost of polar continental regions and on continental slopes, as you can see in this map. However, this map is not current. For instance, in Brazil, we have already recovered gas rates and Amazon Deep Sea Fund and Rio Grande Coney, as we can see in these works. Besides that, in this map, we have the production, you can see that we have the production of them in Canada, Russia, and Japan. 
the gas rate stable zone. The gas rates are stable at high pressure and low temperature. The base of gas rate stability zone marks the maximum depth and the maximum temperature of gas rate stability. So they are stable at shallow zones and low temperatures, as we can see. The base of gas rate stability zones is identified indirectly in the sign profile by the bottom simulation reflector. BSR is a negative impedance constraint, high amplitude seismic events that mark the hydrate free gas phase boundary. So, as the sea floor has a positive, positive impedance contrast, the BR sign sign profile will have a reversal polarity in relation to the sea floor reflector. So, the occurrence of gas rates is known by two seismic features, such as BSRs and blank zone. As I said before, BSRs is characterized for, has a, have a reversal polarity in relation to the seafloor reflector, approximately to the seafloor and mimics being parallel to it, and often cross cut the basin plane of the host sediments, as we can see right here. The blank zones are transparent seismic effects caused by the reduction of amplitudes that is typically observed above the BSRs due to the great cementation, or it can be associated vertically with gas chimneys. Right here we have an example in the story area where you know that the base of gas bridge stabilizes it at around 150 meters below the floor. However, sometimes not trivial to do this identification due to the geophysical ambiguity. For instance, we have right here two examples of works that we have one and more BSRs. Right here we have a double BSR occurs in Nankai Slope, Japan. This authors discuss the meaning of this. More than one BSRs or double BSRs could be a paleo BSRs, meaning changes in the base of gas rate stable zone due to sea level change or temperature change of water waters, or it can be by sedimentary heterogeneity. Examples, carbonate precipitation or bacterial methane oxidation near rates accumulations in the sediments. Right here you have another example, but with Severos BSRs in Joetsono, next to the tax pool, the study area. Note they interpreted three BSRs. So how to identify the base of gas rate stable zone, the true BSRs? You should apply sign attributes to distinguish the true BSR from other reflectors with reverse polarity. They are directly disfading for alt crops of gas rays, mounds, and pockmarks, or by direct sampling by piston pushing car. Right here, we have um, pictures in the study area where you can see massive heat rates recovered by piston cars. After a drilling well, sedimentary intervals with gas rates in a geophysical logging are generally known to have high velocities BP and VS, high hesitivity, and low dialect constraints. For instance, right here we have a log and right drilling values from Umitaka to its basin, where we can see that we have a low natural gamma rate, zero API, higher hesitancy, 100, range to 100 and 1,000 ohm meters, and a high VP range to 2,500 to 3,500. 3, As you can see, is associated with the BSR's occurrence. The scientific relevance of them is zero hazard prevention because changes in the temperature and pressure could disestablish in the base of gas rate stable zone, so causing dissociation of them, and hence submarine slides and slump and green gas emission, greenhouse gas emission. And if, is, if it could be a larger amount, you can cause global warming. Besides that, they serve for parallel environment studies. For instance, we have the hypothesis at the last glacial glacial maximum. We have the sea level fall that you could cause a indirect pressure release, leading an uplift of the base of gas rate stable zone, dissociation, the, the hydrates, and causing a collapse of the mount. 
as you can see right here, the collapse of the mouse generation, the pockmarks, and the turbid currents, the slumps. Besides that, they serve as analogous in studies on climate system of Mars. We know that at Mars, we have a seasonal variation of methane in the atmosphere. And sometimes in one of the parts that it could be by the dissociation of gas rates. So we have two another parts. It, the orange could be abiotic from serpentinization at low temperatures of olivine and water, or it can be by microbial actions. So it could mean orange of life outside Earth. Another point is avoiding industrial risk. For me, it's an uh, economic point too, because the presence of them in pipelines can block flows in oil, ga in oil gas activities. The economic relevance of them is the great potential energy of them. According to Shang, we had carbon quantified twice more than all fossil combined. And according to Kevin Dovin, at the standard temperature and pressure conditions, in one cubic smears of gas rates, we can generate a large quantify of methane gas with water. And it can be used as means of transport at storage of natural gas in the long term, such as space travel fuel. It emits less carbon dioxide than oil and coal combustion processes, and it, still, it serves as seal for rising gas in unconventional residual. Study era. Jueto Basin is located in the eastern margin of the Japan Sea at around 30 kilometers of charge with safety. And the Jueto Basin has an area of 77 square kilometers. Mitake Spu has an area of 43 square kilometers. And it is a asymmetric anticline, north and north, north sul trend. This region is tectonic active. The Japanese archipelago is surrounded by five plates, Opcox on north, Pacific on west, Eurasia on southwest, Amu on west, and Philippine on south. Japan Sea is a composite back arc basin formed behind the Japanese island's arc system. Its formation process started with the hifting of the western margin of the Eurasian continent in the early Miocene. The tectonic regime in Japan Sea has been compressive westwards since the Pliocene, generating anticlines such as Jueto and Mitaka and Synclines. Currently, anticlinal subduction occurs between Amur and Akot plates. Since 2004, integrated study of geology and geochemistry and geophysics have identified a large accumulation of gas rates association with methanization Mitaka where around and on Mount, a number of gigantic methane plumes and a number of gas vent sites have been observed, as you can see in pictures. These sites are closest to ages with gases. It's supposed to be having initiated in the, reef, in the reefing of the eastern margin of the Eurasia at about 25 million tons. In 2004, we have the trilling of two wells, Met Sado Nanseyoki Deep and Met Sado Nanseyoki Shallow, where we have a subcommercial accumulation of oil in Omitaka. The source work are the shales from Nanatami and Taragamari formation from the Miocene, where is the rift system. The reservoirs is the are the tuber defense composites of two fascial sandstone and siltstone from the Teradomari and Shia formation. The migration occurred in the basin version in the Pliocene, where the faults were activated and they serve as uh, oil traps and the gas migration, the Nishiyama formation. The sedimentary and the clay sediment from information that have been deposited since late Pliocene. Besides that, we have two different accentures of carbon. So we have two different sources, thermogenic in the mouse end and biogenic in surrounding areas. This distinction is done by the, uh, the geochemical analysis of the carbon stable zones. Thermogenic gas has an isotope carbon 13, signature greater than 
minus 60. Why biogenic has a signature less than minus 60? Right here, so right here we have the thermogenic amounts and the biogenic surrounding radius. And right here you have an example of the diagram from this work, mathematical. Note that the most predominance is the thermogenic origin of them. It to review. Sign can be able to do receiver characterization, Eloise, which can act as filter that could quantify properties of sign image. Chen and CD distinguish sign attributes by the properties measured in three types: mathematical, geophysical, and geological. Right here, we'll base a brief uh, board uh, addressing about the attributes that are used in this work two of amplitudes and two that measure frequency and two that lithological sign. Envelope and amplitudes envelope of colored reflection strength measures the total energy, instantaneous energy and is sensitive to chance in acoustic impedance. It's useful for the identifying bright, dim, or flat spots and to determine letter variation. Right here we have an example for um, a guy to all they apply it to highlight the BSRs in sound profiles from from Foz Amazonas Base in Brazil. The root mean square amplitude, defined by equation one, is useful to identify hydrocarbon accumulation and to track lithological chance. And it, it's used to make the amplitude volume technique, apply the amplitude volume technique that consists of applying a phase shift of minus 90 degrees in the root mean square amplitude. It's useful to highlight the high impedance constraints, the discontinuous and lateral variations. Right here, you have an example from Vernegan Trinchero. They apply it to identify fault systems and intrusive bars in Simca data from Gulf of San Jorge in Basin, Argentina. So, relative acoustic impedance is useful for identifying sign faces to recall difference in acoustic impedance from a background trend and can be employed as a relative measure of parasites. Right here we have an example from these actor authors. They apply it to identify hydrocarbons from aqueous fields Niger Delta, Nigeria. Note that we have the hydrocarbon that's fired and note to also note that Right here we have the origin sign and the, you have the enhancement of the reflectors after applying these attributes. Depending on the chosen dominant frequency for the, the, the spectrum of the composition, you can highlight thinner with higher frequencies and thicker reflectors, lower frequencies. It's useful to extract detailed stratigraphic patterns with thickness related to dominant frequencies processed with sign, and it can be applied to highlight free gas zones, sign attenuation. Right here we have an example from Oliveira. They, he applied it to study gas rates accumulation in Pelotas Basin, Brazil. Picture B is picture A, the origins of the data, with a spectral decomposition of 38 hertz. Note that we Right here, we highlighted the free gas zones, the gas mutation, where we have the blanking zones. So it's at the root of to highlight the free gas zones. Okay. Instantaneous frequency is useful for estimation of seismic attenuation caused by hydrocarbon receivers that cause drop of high frequency components and fracture zone indicator, lower frequency zones. Right here, we have an example from Kuwait Wire. They apply it to investigate the presence of hydrocarbons in Mutakis Pool, Juetsu Basin. Right here, we have a time slice image. Note that we have in, with in red colors a uh, greater sign attenuation, and this is a attribution of the presence of hydrocarbons in the porous to fast sandstone from Shia formation from the study area in Mutakis Pool. Materials and methods. Right here we have the two acquisitions from the two expeditions, NET 720 and NET 89. Note they are similar, they have the similar offsets. The source was the air gun. The sample rate was 1 million seconds, so the Nyquist frequency is 500 hertz. So to avoid the lysing, we should 
eliminates the frequencies, the higher frequencies of 500, the frequency above 500. So we have the, the processing, sign processing flow uh, realized by the jump stack. They made a trace edit, a stack to, a stack to shift, and they pass a band pass filter. So they avoid this aliasing. And spherical divergence predicted the convolution, semi starts, and stout migration with a velocity that is approximated to the velocity of the, the seawater because the focus of the study was the shallow zones. And they made a final top move in the migration section, and the data are time data. Right, right here we have the survey realized by the NET720. It covered an area of 77 square kilometers of Umitaki Spur and surrounding areas. And that is the main work steps. First, we made uh, the loading of time profiles, the quality control, the identification of BSRs without the application of sign attributes. But we have a tremors, such as the complex geologic framework. So uh, we applied these six sign attributes and we did the fine interpretation of BSRs. Results and discussion. First, we did the loading of the data into Petrel. Right here, in the blue colors, we have the sign line from the NET720. While in green colors, we have the sample line from the NET89. So we made a quality control and we removed the 40 sample line from NET720 because it's well covered. So we did the C4 grid generation and the identification of your size without the application of sample attributes. I confess for me it's something difficult because the BSRs are so weak as we can see because due to the complex geologic framework as we can see right here in the sample line we have blank zones above BSRs and the gas chimneys we have faults and diffraction there aren't collapsing the migration step and more than one high negative amplitudes that both mimics the seafloor so it could be a severe BSRs, don't know. So I did the SIMIC attributes application. Due to the vast number of SIMIC lines, only two lines were selected for this discussion, both from the NET720 expedition, 90 and the strike line for uh, 5T51. These SIMIC lines were chosen because they have the most interesting SIMIC features such as pockmarks, BSRs get skinned, and even flat spots in the ninth line based on previous studies. The focus of this work was the same quality, quality of the shallow zone corresponding to a zoom information of the later quaternary because as known for Matsumoto as well, the base of gas rate stable zone occurs at around 150 meters below C4. Right here, we have the same interpretation from this work from Frey et al. Note that we have two types of methane origins, biogenic around around us and thermogenic in the gas chimney. We have below the BSR a flat spot, meaning a gas with a high water saturation. Right here, we have the origins of ice formation and they have a high methane flux migration from a low methane flux migration from carabets. Right here you have the 51. Note that we have a debris flows, BSRs, and severe, severe pockmarks. So we applied the envelope. Right here we have the origin time line so I applied the envelope. Note that it highlighted the high amplitude anomalies, the BSRs, and also the debris flows between the 40 and 50 eyes information. And the second one that it, so I made the question, 
it's a paleo BSR or precipitation of carbonates. Based on previous works, it may be uh, methane derivated autogenic carbonates, MDs, ACs. Zooming the, this region from the ninth cyclic line, we have also know that it highlights both the flat spot, the BSRs, and the carbonate zones. Carbonate precipitation zones. This is such, but it's good to highlight the high amplitude anomalies. However, as I said before, it's not it's not good to differentiate uh, BSRs for another reflector with a high amplitude anomaly. For instance, if we get an amplitude analysis of these areas, we will see that they have a similar amplitude values. So amplitude analysis is not useful to distinguish uh, BSRs from another reflector with a high amplitude anomaly, such as MGA6 in this case of study, because they have similar amplitude values. So root mean square amplitude application. Root mean square amplitude is useful to highlight extreme amplitude anomal anomalies. So it has a effect similar to that of envelope. It highlighted the BSRs and the MEGCA zones. So we apply a phase shift of minus nine degrees to make the amplitude volume technique application. Right here, note that we have the high impedance constraints highlighted, the BSRs, the flat spot, and the MDCAs, and it highlighted the discontinuous and lateral variation of some phases. So it's useful to highlight the fault system, as you can see, a great fault system with a gas stream blanking the zones. So we applied a relative acoustic impedance. Note that right here, we have blanking zones in the gas stream example VSRs. And after applying the relative acoustic impedance, we enhance all reflectors, including those in the blanking zones. We are back up, highlighted. So zooming these regions, we see that is highlighted the flat spot, the BSRs, and also the diffractions that aren't collapsed in the migration step. Then we did the spectrum decomposition. Before applying the SIMC frequency attributes, it's good to check the dominant frequency of the SIMC data for a better understanding of the dynamics involved. Right here, we have the most dominant frequencies are in the peaks between 18 and 100 hertz. Note that the frequency less than 25 hertz and greater than 400 hertz are less dominant due to the band pass filter applied. Besides that, due the to physical properties, the tendency is for higher frequencies to be attenuated more quickly than the lower ones. So this have this. So we choice the region of interest and we made a spectral analysis frequency of in this region. In order to know which central frequency to choose for the application of spectral decomposition, Azum was applied in the region of more dominant frequency. So note that the 101 is the most dominant. And to analyze the effects of different spectral decomposition, six different central frequencies were applied with a fundamental frequency of 25 hertz. So we applied 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, and 150 hertz. So right here we have the same images with the same scale, the same scale, and but with the, the different frequencies, note that the lower the lower frequency, the 25 hertz, highlighted the thicker parts, and the higher one highlighted the thinner parts. The best one for the sine interpretation was the 100, 105 hertz because the 105 
because it's it's well balanced. So we apply the law to investigate the free gas zones, note the, the law propensity, highlight the free gas zones below the BSRs where the greater sign continuation occurs. And to enhance the BSRs aspect to the composition of 100 has plus envelope was using in the 51 line. So we highlighted the BSRs and right here you have the zone of the pre precipitation carbonate. Finally, we applied instantaneous frequency. Right here, note that we have a red spot from the deep source. So it means a greater seismic attenuation. So the meaning of this is the presence of free gas zones from this deep source. A high methane flux occurs right here. And zoom in this area where we have a purple spot right here. We can see a purple spot above a uh, region of greater seismic attenuation with the yellow spot. So it can be attributed of the presence of gas grade sealing this methane flux from the source. Right here you have the BSR. Right here they have the 90. So note that we have also red spots. Where right here you have the high methane flux and in this yellow spot we have the low methane flux from cryo beds. And zoom in this area we can see, also see the gas rates in the base of gas rates with the zone, sealing the free gas zone below it, where we have a zero a range to a frequency uh, ranging to zero to 50 hertz. So we have a greater sign attenuation right here. And based on Matsumoto's all coincidence of accumulation zones of regrets in methane with methane derived autogenic carbonates may imply cogenetic relations. So enhances methane flux causes carbonate precipitation while also leading to hydrate accumulation. So we can, it could mean right here above the base of gas receiving zone, uh, the high methane flux feeding this methane derivate oxygen carbonates and why leading to the hydrate accumulation. And right here, and besides that, we have the hypothesis of the less glacial maximum, the sea fall, and between these three things, and the methane derivate carbonate oxygen. Uh, according to Matsumoto, first, we have right here illustration. In the interglacial, we have a high stand, so we have high pressure, so there is a stable zone. The carbonates in green. Uh, above the methane rates. And in this red line, we have the sulfate methane transition. In the transition, we have the mount. So we have the formation of the gas rates. And in the glacial time, we have a sea level fall leading to unstable and the dissociation of gas rates constantly the pockmarks formation. And this part is, is based on, according to Matsumoto, the age of MGCAs, approximately 20 kilo annuals, based on uranium and thorium data, seems to indicate that the Eustache sea level fall toward LGM caused a massive dissociation of gas rates and consequent methane migration on and around active mounds due to the show, show up of the base of gas rate signal zone at least 10 meters. It causes accelerated anaerobic oxidation of methane and carbonate precipitation at sulfate, sulfate methane transition. And the formation of gas rates in shallow sulfate subsurface where the amplified free waters are available for hydration formation. Right here, we have the 90 line with the instantaneous frequency. I changed the color scale to highlight the gas rates. So you can see the gas rates and the pock marks. So we did the fine interpretation of BSRs. 
the goal was to identify all of them. So we did it. Right here, we have the elevation time and the BSRs interpreted from all these 29 sample lines. And in the red colors, we have the shallow zones, while in the purple colors, we have the deeper zones. And compare if uh, the initial interpretation of BSRs, uh, for me, interpretation of BSRs without the aid of sample attributes is difficult because BSRs are weakest, weak, discontinuous, and patch. And we have blank zones in these regions, and we have fault system. So the application of sign attributes is essential because it enhances the BSRs, make them more vi visible, continuous, and reduce the acoustic transparency of blank zones. Right here, we have in the red color the shallow zones where it's associated with the gas stream that made the upper water purgation of hydrocarbon gases developed to gas hydrates accumulation. And the mounds and pockmarks are situation with, with this zone. The BSRs, as we can note right here, in gas streams range from 1.4 to 1.5 through wave travel, approximately 0.1 to wave travel time B below sea floor. So run sediment won't ring into 1.6 to 1.8 to wave travel tra time, uh, approximately 0.3 TWT below sea floor. And we already interpreted the flat spot. They are approximately in the 1.6 to 8 tra travel time, approximately 0 0.2 TWT below C4. The flat part are, means the gas with high water saturation below the BSRs, and right here they have the BSRs. So the conclusion. This work developed a methodology for the interpretation of base of gas rate stability zone in the Yumitake Spur, a very known gas great provincial, great base in Japan, which constituted the application of sign attributes to enhance bottom simulation reflectors. It used 2D single channel sign profiles from two expeditions, NET 720 and NET 8.9 from Jamstack, due to the logical geological uh, complexes such as free gas zones that generate acoustic transparency of the signal and discontinuous of the BSRs and even precipitation of altogenic carbonate in the azure formation. It isn't easy to interpret the BSRs with, without an uh, aid of sign attributes. Thus, to enhance the BSRs in free gas zones associated with these unconventional receivers in the science profiles, six sign attributes were applied. Respectively, two attributes that measure amplitudes Envelope and uh, which means square amplitude, two of geological assignments, amplitude volume technique and a relative acoustic impedance, and two that measure the frequency of the sign signal, such as instantaneous frequency and spectral decomposition were used. The envelope sign categories serve to highlight the regions with of greatest amplitude energy. However, it proved an ineffective to distinguish uh, true BSR from another reflector with reverse polarity. For instance, the amplitudes of BSRs and zones where methane derived autogenic carbonates occur are similar. The root mean square amplitude generator uh, has a similar to envelope, but this attribute was used mainly to apply the amplitude volume technique. Both amplitude volume technique and relative acoustic impedance serve to highlight the impedance constraints of the layers and thus the discontinuous, allowing a better visualization of the sections intercepted by faults. Besides that, relative acoustic impedance made for reflectors stronger, reducing the acoustic transparency of free gas zone. Ultimately, the analysis of the frequency domain of the sine data was made. The spectral decomposition and instantaneous frequency were applied to investigate the sign continuation of the data. These sign attributes highlighted the free gas zones strong presence in Umitaki spur, where the lower frequencies are more dominant in sign profiles. In this way, both served to highlight the BSRs, which in seismic phase boundary that separates a zone of greater 
attenuation, pre-grass zone below. For a milder sign of attenuation, gas rays in the sediments above. So they served to distinguish BSRs from reversible polar reflex where MEGACs may occur. Therefore, some catabolites play a fundamental role in the analysis of subsurface layers. They reduce the uncertainties in higher industrial physics, giving the interpreter greater security. Thus, all BSRs were interpreted according to the results BSRs and gas genes, range for 1 part to 1.5 TWT below C4, and approximately 0.1 TWT below C4, while in the 200 sediments, we have a range from 1.6 to 1.8 TWT, approximately 0.3 TWT below C4. Recommendations. Calculate the interval velocity from the depth of the basic gas drain stable zone versus the TWT to BSR. Apply the same categories to enhance the real BSRs to other areas. For instance, apply sentence frequencies to identify the free gas zones in Juetsu no, Juetsu Base in Japan, next to Mitak, where in this work we have interp they interpreted three BSRs. So the reference acknowledgements. I want to thank to Japan and Jens for Marine of Science and Technology and Stack for providing data that from NET 7, 20, and NET 8, 9 expeditions. The School of for the Petrel 2019, the sense of able to Universidad Federal Fluminense, CAPS for financing this project, the Evaluation Board, Dr. José Antonio Cupertino and Rio Matsumoto for accepting the invitation and for the willingness to give feedback on the work. My advisors, Clevenson Gizan and Fernando Frey, for our patience, attention, and shared wisdom. Dr. Luis Alberto Santos, who guided me during my geophysics graduation. GK, a group composed of very competent and generous professionals. I'm very grateful to be part of this team. My family and friends for their support. That's my contact. Arigato. Thank you. Obrigada. Okay, thank you, uh, Luiz San, for your presentation. Uh, I think you, you did a well presentation. You uh, uh, confident about your data, and now we will uh, pass for the next step for your defense. Uh, Massimo Sensei, uh, are you here? Okay. Okay. Uh, please, uh, I, I want to start to start uh, uh, listening your considerations, and please, if you are ready, you can go on. Okay, uh, let me have a time to uh, give some questions and uh, comments. And overall, I appreciate your effort to characterize okay. the BSR. Change the place. Sorry, uh, change the place. Sorry, I get the pencil. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, young people. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Coffee break. I'm. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Eloise, please uh, listen careful, uh, because the uh, online presentation or online discussion, we need to avoid to discuss at the same time. So please mm -hmm. listen what Matmut Sensei will say, write, and then you can ask. Because mm -hmm. if no, we, both people we can talk at the same time is confused, okay? But what All right. Say, please go on. Well, yes, yeah, thank you very much for your very good presentation. And also, I appreciate your, uh, your effort to characterize the BSR of Joe's Basins in Japan Sea. And uh, you, uh, your thesis is composed of uh, four or five parts. And the first that uh, you mentioned about the uh, literature review, uh, it well written, and uh, I, I'm very surprised you you studied lots and you learned lots from the previous papers on the uh, geology and of Joe's basins and the uh, geological development of the Japan Sea, and they are. Uh, 
and the chemistry of gas hydrate and the uh, origin of gas hydrate, etc. And also uh, your uh, literature review of the seismic method is uh, very, very good. I appreciate it, uh, very good uh, part. And then on the other part, uh, where you are trying to uh, enhance the identification of BSR or BJHS in Japan C. And at the beginning, uh, you mentioned about that there are double BSR in your literature review. And in, in, in that part, you referred uh, Nakajima to 2014 papers. And they are, he showed that there are uh, several BSRs as a, a sort of double BSR. But mm -hmm. his double BSR or his multiple BSR is not true. It's very much speculative. So, and I, I don't think it's, uh, uh, you, you should not defer that, pa that paper as a double BSR, example of double BSR. So double BSR, is uh, very well discussed by Huxie in the uh, Nankai draft. I think that, uh, that that's very good data. Uh, concerning that the WBSR, you, uh, you refer that the uh, MDAX or carbonate presentations as one of the, the uh, origin of WBSR above the RPSR. But I, I think that they are, well, you, you frequently refer that the uh, carbonate prestations are the origin of uh, high amplitude uh, anomalies. So, but the uh, carbonate is scattered throughout the sediments, not occurred in the uh, uh, embedding planes. It's actually based on the, the actual drilling, we discovered lots of carbonate. It, they are very much scattered throughout the sediments. So it's, uh, it's not reasonable to, to think that there are uh, carbonate prestation occurs, such as BSR-like uh, reflectors in sediments. And uh, you, are, oh yeah, yeah. At the beginning, at the beginning, the introduction part, you mentioned that the the study of hydrates may be applied to their analog in mud studies. What what do you think about that the relation with the mud study and their hydrate studies? No, oh, and it's for me talk to talk. Yeah. And um, I read from some articles such as Web Story to all Aussie and Charmer, they talk about the discussion about the meaning of the season variation of methane. And it's an hypothesis, it's, it's just an hypothesis that it could be from uh -huh. the dissociation of gas rate. I, I found it in interesting puts. Okay. I saw in this, it, it's, it's not a, a universal truth. It's mm -hmm. just a uh, hypothesis <laughs> yeah. that I get from this 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 reference. In this, for me, this reference is uh, have meaning. The web statue, oh, there was the charmer. I think all the charmer is from the nature, so I put it. But yeah, yeah. not yeah. the true. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's very I interesting mean, topics in I the hydrate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hydrating the mass and the hydrating the carbonates. Um, the, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, well, and there are your figures just before their result and the discussion part. Could you show me that they are figures? The discussion part? Yeah, yeah, discussion part. Yeah, just before that they are result and discussion. Okay. I share? Right here. This one? Yeah, nine, uh, where? 90, no, 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 not this one. This 95, one? 90, 90, they show me that 90, oh yeah, that 94. 94? Yes, 94, yes. 
Yes, uh, this is interesting. And they are, you at the, this is at the distribution of a frequency, low frequency, yellow and red is low frequency. And the blue, red is, uh, a blue one is a high frequency, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you, uh, you press at the BGHS, uh, or actually this is the BSR. So this the BSR, how, how did you, how could you place this, uh, BJHS on, on that positions. This is uh, based on the, uh, your uh, seismic attribute study or from the other data. Why I applied certain frequency? Yeah, yeah, in, in this. Oh, you I, I applied based on, on the Okui work, so uh, where they they use it to identify hydrocarbons in Umitak school, but from shear formation. So I, I thought that will be fine to apply these attributes. So this Eloise. consideration was. What? Por favor, eu acho que a pergunta que ele está querendo fazer assim: de onde você trouxe essa BSR? Foi você que traçou em função do atributo? Ou você trouxe, por exemplo, das anomalias de amplitude? Você trouxe isso de lá ou você traçou ela aí diretamente nessa figura? É, essa aqui eu fiz para todas e, e, e in English, fiz a... in English, please. This one I made for this figure based in the 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 colors, the spots. As we can, you in the annex, in the appendix, appendix in the annex, I put the interpretation. I interpretation the B as R's using the, all the attributes and comparing them. For instance, when I apply the, the amplitude volume technique, the BSR seems to be uplifted. But when I apply the instantaneous frequency, the frequency attributes such as instantaneous frequency and the, the spectral decomposition, the BSR was right here below. And I, I was comparing to the envelope, so I decided to interpret it then right here. So uh, I made the interpretation of them, applying all the sign attributes and uh, com made a compare of them to see what's the, the position it could be, the BSR. Was it? Well, sorry, and there, my question is not, uh, not clear. I, you know, let me, repeat, uh, your, your thesis is focusing to characterize the uh, BSR or BJHS by through the, the seismic attribute studies. And before that, we know we could identify the BSR on seismic sections, seismic profiles, without using, without applying their seismic attribute method. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. and they are, so it, it is a they are very simple method. Perhaps that they are, you can show us the very low data of seismic profile and we could identify on the basis of that uh, polarity reversal or oblique reflectors to the, the bedding frame or high amplitude reflectors and then we, we can identify the BSR, but uh, um, this may not be true. Sometimes that uh, this misread to identify the BSR. So you try to characterize or identify that the DR BSR based on their six seismic amplitude studies. Yes. So I, I appreciate it very much. And the, here we look at this, these figures on the, the screen. So that the BGHS, this at the white line is taken from their very simple method using that their uh, seismic profile. And then at the color change, color image, yellow, green, blue, or red. This is taken from that their your uh, seismic amplitude studies. 
Uh, no, no, sample to uh, attri attribute studies. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the instantaneous frequency, right? Yeah. And if so that uh, if we are to, if you erase this white line, BKHS, the boundary between the yellow green zones and the blue zones, that the, the boundary is occurs a bit lower than the BJHS zone, white lines. If you look at these figures, they are yellow and green, that, that they represent that they are free gas zones, and blue and the red one, this is a, just a, what's it, the hydrate zones. Those boundaries, hydrate dominated zone and the free gas dominated zone, is identified by the color change, and that the boundary occurs a bit lower than the white lines. What, what, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, is not. I, I agree with you, and yeah, as I did the interpretation based in the same categories, for example. Yeah, the TechVA look like they uplift. But when I see right here, the spot is different. So. Mm. Mm. What, what about the, uh, the other attributes? The, the other attributes? Frequency attributes. Yeah, the other attributes. The envelope. Yes. Highlight the the yeah, yellow, part, yeah. yeah, and yeah. all the high amplitude. So VSR for me is right here. Well, what do you have at the VSR on this? Right here. The base of gas is rate stable zone, and double right BSR here. Is the, yeah, yeah, we have a double BSR, but I don't know. For me, it's a carbonate precipitation, but it can be a paler VSR too. So, so this blue one, blue line, blue line this, this, this indicates yeah. that? Yeah, this blue line is the VSRs and above. It could be a paler VSRs or a carbonate precipitation. Mm. And below the base of gas rate stable zone, this high amplitude anomaly is from the debris flow that generate it. This, this envelope for me, these attributes is not useful to distinguish because they highlighted all the high amplitudes, but right here we can be the, we can see that the BSR is more enhanced, more stronger than from above. So the base of gas day stable zone is right here. And then I apply, I, oh. So in, the, in this case, the amplitude and this is longer reflector. So the BSR was interpreted right here. And above it, we have the same uh, stronger reflector. So, and it mimics the C4, so it can be a pale BSR or carbonate precipitation. So I did mm. this. Oh. <laughs> So the carbonate, carbonate and the hydrate show that they are the similar characteristics in the your seismic attribute study. Both are the hard materials compared with the free gas or water. Or carbonate, or carbonate. For me, it's a carbonate based on this, this is third. I don't have the direct sampling, but based in your studies for me, it's a carbonate precipitation. Mm. And it's highlighted the fault. So I applied the relative acoustic impedance and it made it stronger. So the BSR is well highlighted yeah, right yeah. here. Yeah, on the side there, uh, this is the figure 72. Figure 72, you, you identify the BSR at yeah. around the, uh, two, 200 millisecond. Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. So that there. Uh, that BSR, this is identified from the seismic profile. 
Right here. This is a symmetric root. Yeah, that, that, that is the BSR. That's the BSR. And they are it's talking at uh, uh, the frequency that I already talked. So when I compare with all the same get roots right here, we highlighted the 100 hertz was the best one. So we can see the BSR right here and yeah. the free get zones right here yes. below the BSRs. So I interpreted right here and Compare, we can see that we have uh, like a yeah. line, uh, yeah. a purple line. So I thought to be compared that BSR will be right here, mm -hmm. where it's above a greater mm -hmm. sign continuation. Mm -hmm. So it's matched with the others. I did this interpretation comparing all the six sign attributes to identify the real, real BSRs, because for me it's very ambiguous, right? He's, sometimes the BSRs look like that's below or above. So I, I did all these applications to compare which to interpret BSRs. So in the annex that I, I addressed to you, the annex I compare all the six sample applications, the six sample attributes application. So I compare it in, I put the identification of BSI, the ORSO, with all these, these, size, these six different time capped roots, comparing them in the same scale to compare. But in the, pre the, in the presentation, I didn't do this because it will be so much longer. So I just, mm -hmm. I just show the results, the, mm -hmm. not the interpretation, but I compare it. Yeah, thank I you. Did yeah, thank you. I wrote that they uh, may understand that uh, in this uh, diagram, in these figures, and the blue and the uh, red dot above about at uh, 200, 300 millisecond, those uh, indicate the domination of hydrate rather than free gas. And the green and the yellow zones indicate the more free gas zones. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, uh, but the, your BSR occurs in the uh, hydrate dominated zones, blue and red zones, not between the uh, green and the blue zones, right? Uh, sorry, my internet is unstable. Uh, yeah. So here, uh, can you the see green, my arrow? The, the red colors is the yeah. greatest time attenuation, zero frequency, and the yeah. yellow, the 50. And above it, it could be a gas rate or another sediment that is a, where it is a less time attenuation. I, this this certain frequency is good to know the gas rate presents the gas rate no the free gas zones presents because it measures the time attenuation so it serves to highlight the free gas zones uh, not the gas rates but when I highlighted the free gas zones I highlighted the zones below the BSRs so hence I highlighted the BSR too because. Right here we have a, a fronter, a phrase boundary between a purple spot and a yellow spot. So it could mean the gas rate ceiling. That was my interpretation. If it's true, I don't know, but I mm. interpret it right here. <laughs> so do you think that the, the gas hydrate should occur even right below here. BSR? And they are free gas to the car. No, yes, no, BS, BSRs. BSRs is the frontier between the frontier between the purple spot and the free gas zones. So above the BSRs, that BSR is the base of gas rate stable zone. So above BSRs between the base of gas rate stable zone and the steel floor, we have we can have gas. Uh, filter in the, uh, in the sedimentation, we can have both uh, carbonates. 
So right here, I think that it could mean a, a gas rate presence above the base of gas rate stable zone, the BSR. So right here in the front, BSR is right here up. I have an um, illustration. Mm -hmm. BSR and above in the purple spot we have the gas rates and another sediment, interregional sediment, but right here in this picture we have the BSRs and above the BSRs we have a purple spot that shows the gas rates presence sealing the free gas zone below compared yeah. to this. Mm. So right here we have BSRs in the blue color right here and the gas rate in the purple color, BSR, mm -hmm. gas, uh, free gas zones from the deep source from the gas chimney. So we have this effect. So BSR is right here and the gas rates above seeing the methane flux. That was my interpretation. I don't know if it's true, but mm -hmm. it's okay. okay, I understand that. So that the free gas should exist even above BSR within gas chimney. Yeah, for me, yes. From the search, free gas zones below mm. the base of gas rates. Mm -hmm. But also that they are, on, on this figures shows that they are uh, yellow zone, free gas zone occurs. Yeah. Above BSO, uh, above gas hydrate. Yeah, it can means. Yeah. So inter layer, gas hydrate. It could be sand. It could be sands and gas sands. Could be it's gas sands too. Could be it's gas sands because frequency is uh, a certain frequency serves to measure the porosity of sands. But right here we have a clay sediment, but we have a porosity, Hello, a free able sands. Eloise, uh, I okay. think Matt Mosensei is talking about the presence of uh, free gas even above the, gas, the, the base of the gas hydrate stability zone within the gas chimney. You, you, you show this in this figure and the others. And this is a very nice point because it's uh, unusual. We have get free gas within the gas hydrate stability zone. So, why it occurs? Because we have the flux, we have the dehydration of the segments, we don't have more uh, water available, and we have also gas coming from the deeper reservoir. So we have free gas because of this. I think that's the point that, that Matsumo Sensei is, is, is trying to, to discuss. Is it, Professor Matsumo? Yes, right. Yes, and they are very interesting data and uh, you showed this. And uh, in particular, free gas exists even above BSR. That's very exciting and they are this consistent with our uh, data. But also you, you show, you seem to show that their uh, gas hydrate concentration occurs even below BSR. Some no. data. No. No? No, even below, no. I think no. It can mm -hmm. be a presence of uh, uh, igneous rock. I don't know. It, it could be igneous rock. No, no, no. <laughs> it can mean uh, another sediment because we have okay. gas rates above the the BSR. Okay, know. okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry, and they are so on on the spheres on on the spheres on the uh, right hand side is maybe okay, but the left hand side of these spheres, it they are the blue zones extend down to 300 millisecond below sea floors, well below BSR. But on the right hand side, the boundary between BSR, uh, that's a separation between the, the blue zones and the yellow zones. But on the left hand side, blue zones extend down below BSR. But the uh, blue zones below BSR may not be that they are gas hydrate, but they are compacted sediments or mm -hmm. that they are, are carbonates. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
I will, I will put that yeah. in the... Yeah, not easy to, to differentiate between the, the carbonate yeah. and the hydrate. Yeah. Okay, okay, I got it. I will write this gray observation, gray observation. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Arigato. Arigato Matsumatsu Sensei. Yeah, do it as much. I enjoyed very much. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Massimo Sensei. Uh, good, good comments. And uh, please, uh, if you, if possible, you can send your final comments or something like that by mail or, or send them uh -huh. direct on the file that she sent to you previously. Previously. Yeah, I can prepare that there are some of the comments, and the, so I can send you later. Thank you very much. Uh, she has, she will have some around uh, 60 days uh, to prepare a final version for us. So she has time to, to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your consideration. Uh, uh, Eloise-san, so uh, Matsumoto Sensei's comments are very important because he is the most important scientist that studied this area, this area. No? He, he was my supervisor during my PhD course, and mm -hmm. uh, he's a famous scientist. Uh, I think the most important scientist in Japan that studied this area. This area. So please consider his comments, yeah. and then you can prepare a final version for us. Yeah. And if, if he say he, is, he appreciated and he enjoyed, so it's uh, it's nice comments. It's yeah. very important for you. Uh, you are in the right way. Of course, you have lots of problems to solve, né? because one attribute say one thing, another attribute say another thing. Yeah. Which one is the right one? So <laughs> the, it may be a doctorate course. You can do that. Yeah. Uh, you have to let the, one, more, one more comment, and there are. Please, please. One the comment is that the, the combination of the six of their seismic attributes may confirm the real BSRs in this uh, difficult uh, hydrate bearing zones. Not only in seismic uh, their reflectors, so that their your your study is uh, very uh, encouraging and very good. Thank you very um, much. I very very much impressed Thank your studies. Thank you very so much. I hope you continue this work. For that next step. Made in Japan. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Matsumo Sensei. Uh, now I will change to Dr. Jose Antonio Cupertino. Cupertino, my friend, please go on. Okay. Okay, let's go. Well, first, I would like to say thanks to Professors Frey and Cleverson, and of course, to Eloisa and Helena to invite me to compose this examination board. Okay, also to say hello to Dr. Matsumoto. Uh, it's for me a pleasure to be here with. Okay. For me too. Uh, well, Louise, let's get to matter. Your thesis, your master thesis, is well done. Huh? Uh, you have uh, demonstrated your ability to carry out uh, scientific studies and to follow the guidelines to choose the theme. The theme. Uh, we, uh, you have uh, developed a logical explanation of the problem with the specific objectives. So uh, you had also submitted a theoretical revision uh, and was defined and executed the investigation methodology. So it's a, uh, 
is uh, uh, complete uh, your your dissertation. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, even so, there is some points that I would like to discuss with you, uh, but uh, 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 Professor Matsumoto already sold out the doubts and your presentation also uh, clarifies a lot of uh, points that I have about. Before I would like to emphasize uh, one observation that I consider important about the figure 2-5. Uh, in this figure, we have a, a lack of information and needs to be up updated because this information concerns to the efforts made by PUC to confirm the existence of a high dark gas in the Brazilian basis, mm -hmm. not only in the equatorial margin, as you was mentioned in the test, but also in southern part of Brazil, Rio, Rio Grande Cone, Pelotas Basin, where methane hydrates were recovered by PC. I Põe can name it. 25. Põe na figura 25, Eloísa. 2.5. 2.5. Okay. Uh, I can name it uh, at the list ah, two. Eu, eu peguei a dissertação aqui. É para eu mostrar então a dissertação. Não, eu tô não, mostrando... vai mesmo na 11. Aí a 11. 11. A figura 11. Ah, tá. tá. Eu vou ter aqui o Rio Grande Coin. Mas no, can... texto, no texto, uh, in the text, I only mention the Amazon Zip Sun. So I will put yes, the yes, Rio Grande Coin. Yes, yes. Of course. Uh, I know. Uh, but I can name it two recent public published articles to uh, Ketzer et al. Geosciences 2019 and another Ketzer et al. Nature Communications 2020. And the former of uh, Miller et al. Marine and Petroleum Geology 2050. Okay. Uh, another point that uh, uh, is you mention you mention of uh, 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 the works of uh, Aguiar 2019 and Aguiar 2020, but uh, they are not presented in the references. Okay. Well. Uh, uh, I agree with you that uh, it is difficult to, to, to have uh, more than one BSR, okay? I disagree that uh, have uh, a lot of BSR because it uh, uh, important to emphasize that uh, uh, the, the BSR yeah, yeah, a seismic reflector and represent the interference between uh, impedance differences. Thus, when the phenomenon, the phenomenon is ceases, uh, the stabilization of a, a stable zone, for example, this contrast also disappears, okay? You, uh, um, mentioned the, the importance of uh, uh, carbonate uh, oxygenic uh, deposits, but I disagree also. Uh, for me, uh, it's not a, a, a regional event uh, because the, the, he depends of the, Biogenic activity and uh, the biogenic activity is local, okay? Uh, but uh, is a problem uh, like uh, 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 Freire was talk uh, to a doctor thesis. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for me, it's okay. You you trabalho, you work uh, is complete. 
uh, it, all, all points that uh, I have uh, uh, doubts, uh, I will put in your, your word um, uh, uh, file and uh, I will uh, um, send you for email, okay? Okay. Thank you, Thank, very you. Much, Pertino. Thank you very much, Pertino. Pertino, uh, if you want to say some words in Portuguese, it's not a problem. I think if, if you most uh, want to say additional things in Portuguese, no problem. Okay. Uh, bom, Helena, é, somente é, completando, né? É, realmente raciocinar em português é mais fácil para nós dois, né? Então... <risos> Então, é, é nessa linha né, de que, que eu coloquei, né, é, o teu trabalho está muito completo, certo? Do ponto de vista de uma tese de mestrado, cumpriu todas as etapas do que eu penso ser trabalho de mestrado. As dúvidas que existem e que eu coloco no texto aí que estou te remitindo são muito mais de interpretação do que de dado. Tu pegou e trabalhou com os atributos. É, é complicado trabalhar com os atributos, porque o dado foi adquirido é, em monocanal, os atributos, todos eles foram desenvolvidos para trabalhar com é, é, sísmica multicanal, né? então isso aí já é um problema, certo? É, os resultados também, é, é claro que 100 Hz será a tua melhor, a tua melhor a frequência para observar os dados, porque ele foi adquirido em 100 Hz, ele é um levantamento de, de alta resolução, então vai ser ressaltado sempre, por mais que tu fizer, vai ser ressaltado 100 Hz, ou próximo de 100 Hz, né? E, e sempre as descontinuidades, tirando alguma coisa como uh, o Freire já tinha observado anteriormente, que pode ser um, um flat spot, aquilo pode ser um flat spot, que é uma coisa boa, mas é uma coisa ruim, porque um flat spot limita a ocorrência num volume pequeno, que é uma coisa ruim para quem está pensando em usar isso economicamente. Por outro lado, é muito bom porque é uma resposta sísmica, mostra que o método funciona realmente. Então, do ponto de vista acadêmico, é ótimo, do ponto de vista comercial, não é uma coisa muito interessante. Então, ficam essas questões, eu acho que está ok. Quase todas as dúvidas que eu tive, Talvez são as mesmas que tu tem, porque todas elas estão ligadas à interpretação. Né? É. É, tu tem uma contribuição muito grande que foi trazer para a discussão da, do, do, da determinação do BSR alguns atributos que até então não foram usados, é, é, o que dá uma certa, é, é, um certo brilho né, maior à tua escolha. Parabéns. Tá? E... Estou à disposição, qualquer coisa que tu precisar lá na PUC, a gente pode conversar. Muito obrigada pelas considerações. Obrigada. Obrigada. Thank you very much, Cupertino. Uh, uh, nice comments, and I think uh, Eloise San will incorporate uh, the most of your data uh, after you send to her your considerations. Okay. Thank, you very, thank you very much. Thank uh, you for So now, uh, uh, Cleverson, Cleverson Sun, please, you can make your consideration as as the main out the main supervisor. Okay, so can, can you always uh, congratulations to for, for your presentation? I think it was very nice. Of course, you are nervous at this point. And uh, we are speaking a different language. I think it makes things worse, but I think you did well. So, and uh, as some people said, you had a very nice uh, data and very nice uh, conclusions using seismic attributes. And uh, I want to say that um, I, I was uh, this this uh, this research was conceived by Fernando Freire, and he has the data that he brought from Japan when he, uh, he worked for his uh, thesis. And uh, I was uh, assigned your principal advisor because of uh, some of the 
the regulations of the internal regulation of the university and the, of our program. And uh, because Fernando Freire, he, at that time, he had too many students, so he couldn't afford to have one more. So that's the main reason that that's why I'm here as your main advisor, but uh, Fernando is the principal advisor and uh, he was conducting this, uh, this your defense at this point. And uh, it was very nice to see your defense and uh, your information that you brought here, especially using the, the seismic attributes. I think you, you, in that last many few months, we increased a lot as a professional and as a researcher. And uh, I want to congratulate you about that. Okay, and thank you for having, uh, giving me the opportunity to be part of your thank advice. You. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, you Freddy. Thank you, Cleverson. Uh, as you said, uh, I was the main uh, supervisor, but uh, uh, after your coming to, to the team, the Hydrate team, uh, me and uh, uh, Eloise Sun, uh, her study enhanced so much. Yeah. So after the seminar two, your seminar comments, two. Yeah, your yeah. comments in the seminar two enhanced my my work. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you very you. much. Your your help. You know, uh, enhanced very much the <laughs> seminar two. two. <laughs> Cleverson is a reference. Cleverson yeah, was yeah, my, yeah, my yeah, broad yeah. spot, my broad spot of my mind. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very happy with uh, um, that point of uh, Eloise Sun's uh, study. Uh, she, she finished uh, a step. Uh, in fact, we, we are together since 2000. 18 or something or something like that 17 and 17 so uh, I, i'm following uh, her study has uh, how to say maturity uh, like student like person since three years uh, and and now she's finishing uh, a, a very nice step of her life and i'm very happy to some to help her uh, to, to 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 stay here right now. So, congratulations, Eloise. Congratulations. This term hydrate is not a an usual term. It's very complicated to study hydrate. Not so much people around the world that understand about hydrate. It's very complicated. Few people uh, study about hydrate. And you, one, you are one of them now. And uh, concerning gas hydrate studies, seismic studies is more detailed. We have geochemistry, we have geology, geophysics, and seismic is very unusual. People in uh, oil industry only say, oh, here we have gas hydrate, so avoid this point. Gas hydrate, it looks like a problem, not a solution, not a, a resource. And then people avoid to, to study about gas hydrate because people in uh, oil companies, né? people say, oh no, this is not a good thing to, to have gas hydrate. But we are scientists and scientists have another point of view. And you are very, in a very well way, my, my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so uh, now we the, the the committee will have a meeting. Matsumoto and say, do you do yes. you receive a, a new email I send you to to enter in the meeting room? Oh yeah, I, I just received the message, and we are moving to the uh, uh, another meetings now. Yes, yes. Well, well so before that, uh, I uh, re let me say at one more thing about oh, the, uh, your comment, or uh, lady son, you are you are saying very good. I guess hydrate is very much complicated uh, stuff of scientific materials, but uh, this means that their uh, study of uh, gas hydrate or gas hydrate science is very much interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary, 
we have at uh, lots of aspects of that their uh, target point the geology or chemistry or geophysics or biology or microbiology or very much a bigger their uh, studies so that uh, there we we need to integrate of different disciplines so that uh, this very that, that is a very uh, difficult point to study just hydrate so I hope that uh, Roy Sun, you continue to study gas hydrate from the, the geology and the geophysical point of view. So my, uh, my, my so as a curiosity, wh what was your background before the master thesis? Your geology background or geophysics background or <coughs> what, what did you study for undergraduate? Geophysical, right? Geophysics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are you you are expert in they are dealing with that they are yeah, data, digital data. So I think that you'd better to. Uh, I hope you have a chance to access their hydrate or sediments or uh, core data. So by doing so, you can study more about. Geophysics. Uh, but what I say, she maybe she can do a doctor course in Japan. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. okay. So. That's what I want to say something. It was a pleasure to be right here with you, you, vocês, vocês todos, with you. I'm your friend because if you read the the reference. And mm. all about Matsumoto. Matsumoto is the reference in this area in Japan. It's for me it was a pleasure, a pleasure. I'm very grateful to be right here with you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And, Congratulations. And not only this, he said, I appreciate your work. So it's yeah. very important. Yeah. Thank so you. Uh, please, uh, Matsumoto Sensei, Cupertino, and Cleverson, uh, did you all, all of you receive the. Oh, uh, Eloisa, okay. please. I, uh, I know change the. Yes, the, please. The okay. first of all, we are. But first, no, you, you need not to leave this, to leave Zoom. You just uh, unmute and the camera you turn off. How can uh, Eloisa, can you. Can you. Can you. Você pode tirar aí a apresentação, Eloisa? Porque eu estou com a tela travada aqui, eu não sei como. Isso, boa. Eu tenho que ir para outra. Tá, vou parar a gravação aqui. Ah, tá. Ok, é, Eloísio. Então tá gravando de novo, eu dei uma pausa lá. Ah, o Rui Matsumoto vai entrar de novo. E o Cupertino também. Então, uh, no, uh, a banca se reuniu, né? mas como eu estava dizendo, o professor Matsumoto uh, ele elogiou bastante o seu trabalho, né? ele gostou bastante, ele viu assim, uma contribuição uh, muito importante, pra, principalmente na área geofísica, né? mas no estudo, no estudo interdisciplinar, que é o, o, o estudo dos hidratos. Né? Então, ele realmente... É, ficou bastante satisfeito com o seu trabalho, o mesmo Cupertino, que está aí também presente agora. Então, eu vou ler aqui a ata da, da reunião para ficar registrado. Né? Ah, aos 22 dias do mês de outubro de 2020, às 9 horas, no Departamento de Geologia e Geofísica da Universidade Federal Fluminense, reuniu-se de forma remota a banca examinadora designada para arguir a defesa da dissertação de mestrado da aluna Eloísa Helena Policarpo Neves, sob o título Application of Seismic Attributes to Enhance the Identification of Bottom Simulating Reflectors in the Umitaka Spur Gas Hydrate Province, Joetsu Basin, Japan. A banca foi constituída pelos professores Cleverson Guizan Silva, orientador, Antônio Fernando Menezes Freire, co-orientador, Rio Matsumoto uh, e José Antônio Cupertino, uh, Rio Matsumoto da Media Universe e José Antônio Cupertino da PUC do Rio Grande do Sul. E a banca deliberou pela... 
aprovação. <risos> Thank you. Thank you. you can relax now. Aprovação uh, de acordo com o seguinte parecer. A candidata demonstrou bom domínio sobre o assunto e seu trabalho possui relevância para a academia e para a indústria, com aplicação direta nos estudos relacionados ao tema estudado. Digno de nota foi a disposição em defender seu trabalho em inglês, contando em sua banca com renomados cientistas mundiais no estudo dos hidratos de gás. A banca solicitou alguns ajustes, que serão enviados pelos professores, a serem incorporados à versão final, a ser entregue em um prazo máximo de 60, 60 dias a contar desta data. Então, meus parabéns. Obrigada. Congratulations. Now you are a master. Thank you. Arigato, Matsumoto Sensei. Yeah. Yeah, Obrigada, Cleverson, é, Frei, José Antônio, pela presença. Cupertino, chama Cupertino. Obrigada, gente. Obrigado. Um abraço a tudo que é digno de todos os parabéns. O trabalho foi teu. É o, o louro de dois anos, ao mínimo, né? de, de trabalho. Trabalho duro, eu sei. Até geofísica, né? de formação. Então, deve ser difícil para ti é, incorporar a questão geológica, porque é muito forte no tratamento de hidratos, principalmente entender a questão biológica e a questão geoquímica. Né? Geobiologia e geoquímica são essenciais para a gente ter esse entendimento e fechar o quadro todo. Né? Claro, a geologia regional não pode ser esquecida. Né? É, se tu fores fazer um doutorado nessa área, né? é, lembre de olhar nossas publicações, nós temos mais de 20 publicações já feitas sobre gás e hidratos nas diversas áreas, desde biologia até geologia regional. Né? E ali dá um quadro muito bom, claro que é outra dinâmica, é uma bacia de margem passiva, né? são bacias de margem passiva, onde é mais fácil identificar a continuidade dos refletores, mas bem-vindo ao, ao clube. Né? Obrigada, que bom. É um prazer fazer parte desse clube. É, você é uma pleasure to be part of this team. Congratulations, I hope to see you to discuss on the gas hydrate in Japan Sea and they uh, want to learn a lot from you on the geophysics. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations. It's a pleasure to be with you right here. Thank yeah. you. Arigato Matsumoto Sensei. Bye-bye. Doi itashimashita. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Parabéns, Eloísa. Continue empolgada com o tema e continue trabalhando na área. I love you. Eu cometi, eu cometi um agafe. Eu esqueci de perguntar à audiência se alguém tinha alguma pergunta. I, I, I forgot to ask the, the audience, the people, if they have some questions or some comments to do. So, please, sorry. Sorry about that. So, But uh, the audience I have... Uh, uh, any questions to, to do? I don't know. You I think I have... I have uh, one uh, comment ah. and many yeah. congratulations for this very nice work. Uh, I, my professor Matsumoto, I said my because I passed four years in Japan and uh, I had a very good time there. And uh, this uh, hydrate is very new subject when I went to Japan. The after we open one project here in Brazil that is recovered uh, hydrate in Rio Grande Con that they have very nice uh, uh, new open uh, work could recover uh, hydrate there and the Cupertino is there to maintain this work is uh, open and maybe Uh, Eloisa can continue as, as doctor, and yeah. in, in Japan, of course, Professor Matsumoto, the, the top height uh, scientist there, can help you, and the go ahead, go ahead. Go okay. ahead, go. And the, and many congratulations there. Thank you. And the, this is very good subject to continue, okay? Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Arigato. <laughs> okay, more on, uh, any more questions or comments or something like that? 
So, uh, Eloise Sam, we have lots of data, how Cupertino said. Uh, I, I participated on the discovery of gas radiates in Rio Grande Con. I was on the first mission, uh, MR-11. I was there. And uh, from, from this time, in 2011, from to now, they have lots of data, integrated data, microbiological, uh, DNA, uh, how much more yeah. they said. Uh, it's a integrated study, interdisciplinary. So we yeah. have lots of data to, to study. I want to see it. <laughs> and now, now, nowadays, we have a, 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 a survey, seismic survey, uh, multi channel, uh, high resolution, uh, 48 ca channels. So, Cupertino San, uh, Eloise San now is available. Yeah. I want <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to say, hey, <laughs> yeah, she's very intelligent. Not because she is my, my student, of course, but she's very intelligent. <laughs> it's a, a, a small detail. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. <laughs> so, much more to say, a pleasure for me to see you and hear you uh, again. More than time. I, I hope. Yes, thank you very much for inviting this at the meeting. Is there? I enjoyed very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. I hope see you more I'll... times. Again. Yes. Hope to see you. Hope to see you all. Okay. Goodbye. Um grande abraço, meu amigo. Bye. 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 Vai saindo aí. <risos>